Today we will be launching a long, an extra long range relay satellite that will be going into the polar orbit around Kerbin. And it will go because our Joule probe is on its way to Joule, but its satellite, its, you know, communication antennas have a long enough range while our current relay satellites are somewhat lacking. They can only reach to up to maybe Drez, uh, that is even a long stretch, so most probably they can only reach Duna. So I actually wanted to make sure that I have at least one satellite that will be capable of reaching and relaying data to Joule. So here it is. And for that we need these two gigantic antennas. They have the range of 200 gigame gigameters, which means they will be able to reach Jewel and Sarnus. So that's something to keep in mind. So we are designing this one, and this one will be going in highly elliptical polar orbit as the rest of mine go, and it will be having a little bit more hefty science load. So we have these satellites and we have the Communitron 32, which will allow it to go higher. The reason why I want to go into the higher elliptical orbit is with, it means that this satellite will spend more time above Kerbin and being able to communicate with everybody else. So that's kind of my main shtick here. Uh, right, the rocket itself is going to be really simple because soon enough my uh, uh, probe will be getting into the area around Joule, so I want to make sure that everything is ready by then. So uh, when it reaches Joule, I want to have connectivity because otherwise I wouldn't be able to steer the damn thing. So with that thing being said, I'm actually constructing this as simple as possible and just to get it out there and launch the damn thing. Right, here we go. All stages correct? Okay, there we go. Shall we do a launch clamps and stuff? I don't know, maybe... Oh, by the way, here I want to make sure that I have another probe core because I want to deorbit this booster as well. Might as well, why not? Remote tech antenna, just to make sure that it can go places. Right. Remote tech, all right. Perfect. So, are we ready? Okay, making sure that we communicate communitrons, set to enable, set to enable, set to toggle, set to toggle, solar panel set to toggle. These antennas are actually pretty hungry, so I need to make sh sure that those are powerful enough. Right. Okay, there we go. Let's see, which one would we take? I'm actually almost thinking, should we put in uh, base, medium? Yep, yeah, actually that would work. So let's just put, put that one up and no need to get it more special than that. Let's put a regular modular launch tower, turn it the right way and that one will be launching this thing. So let's just extend it. There we go. Roughly like that and I need to attach the launch clamps and everything else. So where are my launch clamps? Are this? Yeah, I think two is going to do it just fine. There we go. All right. Looks good enough, so we need a swing arm. All right, and there we go, and maybe an umbilical. Okay, so swinging the arm. There we go. Ignition and lift off. We have cleared the tower. Very simple, very simple launch, but remember, this one should be going polar. So that means we will be burning towards the north and quickly switching all the way into the orbital inclination. So there we go, we are going surface north, which is not actually 100% as orbital north, which is something that we are going to correct. You see, our Joule Mega Explorer will be getting towards almost Tylo at, in 37 days, and that's something that we cannot allow. Obviously, this hasn't happened yet, uh, because I will be posting that in the next episode. The ejection of our Joule Mega Deployer, the arrival of it at launch, and everything else will be done there. We only did a cover a launch, and that was one of, in one of the previous episodes. Do check out my playlist if you haven't already. And as you can see, now we have corrected our orbital polar inclination. So we should be going straight 90 degrees up. Apoapsis is going to 100, and then we will be performing the circularization maneuver, and uh, that would be 100 by 100-ish. And once we reach on the South Pole, we will kick up the apoapsis, shoot it straight up to be north, highly elliptical orbit. Yeah. All right. The burn we will be happening in 50 seconds, so just making sure that we are aligned. Decouple the fairing, extending the antennas, then we'll be extending the solar panels as well, and then the main antenna, so yeah. 
There we go. We first need to do a little bit of burning and of course we have some physics wobble because well our Kraken loves us and shows us that even in KSP1 Kraken is not fully dead but it hasn't killed our craft. Right, so uh, there we go and now what we need to do is we're gonna go into an elliptical orbit like these the rest of these jokers and I'm gonna kick it from the bottom and it's gonna go higher elliptical than everybody else. Everybody else is at 5 by 400, we're gonna go actually higher. So I'm thinking of 3.7 million meters, that should be high enough, but we should still with the Communitron 32 be able to reach everything else. So the burn will be 600 meters per second or 700 meters per second, so we're gonna execute it and once we're done, then we're gonna ditch this stage and probably deorbit this little rocket, yes. All right, just making sure that we are pointing manure or maneuver prograde there we go beautiful extending everything oh look at it go ain't it beautiful ain't it glorious so first one will be pointing to the active vessel while the second one will be pointing to jewel because you know crown jewel our main jewel thing etc yeah all right you get the idea all right and as we go down the burn should ignite soon enough. All right, three minutes. There we go, and we are starting the burn, and as soon as we complete the burn, we should be in the desired orbit. You don't say. All right, looks beautiful. I really like designing these relay satellites. I probably have more of them than I need, but that's the whole point of, you know, redundancy. It, it will make them more redundant. It will make them work better. So now let's see, let's rename this part. Kerbin relay, Kerbin long range relay. Good. It has been renamed, shutting down the engine. I do want to keep it in this highly elliptical orbit. And now let's try and land this rocket because, well, that one still has a way to go. Okay, coming back to our rocket, and as you can tell, I'm actually thinking I'm gonna turn pro retrograde and I'm gonna do the burn to do the deorbit. Where it will land, I have absolutely no idea, but it will be fun. We're gonna try it anyway, see what happens. All right, there we go. Making sure that we are pointing retrograde, and once we hit the atmosphere, we're gonna probably draw in the, uh, the antenna. Are we starting to get? Yeah, okay. Draw in the antenna so to make sure that it doesn't break. Whether or not the booster will survive, this is basically the first survive test of the recoverable boosters because we heard from some space exploration companies that this could be the thing and we figured might as well give it a try. All right. We are coming in hot and spinny. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh yeah, I should have put probably an epilepsy warning here. Sorry about that, guys. It has been a little bit spinny. Uh, it, it should dive down pretty soon. 300 meters per second, as in, as you can tell, it's slowly beginning to, how would you call it? Spin less, yes, that's the word. Note that I don't have any uh, any parachutes on this so I've tried to actually control it but I didn't have any authority well 